Chapter 56, The Counterculture Rocks. In the 60s, a group of young people, mostly college-age and middle class, started living differently from most Americans. They wore different clothes, they marched, they demanded power in their schools and colleges. Sometimes they went off to live in their own little communities called communes, and some refused to serve in the army because they didn't believe in fighting. They were part of something that was called the counterculture, it had nothing to do with counters, and a few people, who felt threatened by those who weren't in the mainstream, said it had nothing to do with culture either. But according to the dictionary, culture is behavior patterns, arts, beliefs, institutions, and all other products of human work and thought char characteristic of a population. And that was what the counterculture was all about, behavior patterns. People in the counterculture just didn't behave as most other people did in the 1960s. One meaning of the word is counter is against, and those in the counterculture stood against many of the ideas that guided the Vietnam era. Some people called them hippies, some people called them strange. Mostly, they were energetic and idealistic. They were Jewish and Catholic and Protestant and Muslim and Buddhist. They had skin tones that were chocolate and honey and peach and mustard. They were male and female. None of that seemed to matter. What did matter was music and protest and ideas. They thought the Vietnam War was wrong and immoral. They were civil rights marchers and they helped register new voters. Many more, their hair long and their clothes loose and colorful. Many lived in California, and they made other Americans realize that much of the nation's population had shifted west, and that maybe its ideas had shifted too. They had big dreams. They wanted to make America live up to its ideals, and they might have achieved more if it hadn't been for some of their experiments, like drugs, which turned to, which turned to disaster. But people in the counterculture did change things. They questioned everything, refused to conform, and made their favorite music, rock music, a national passion. Rock was a throbbing, pulsing, new kind of sound that took advantage of the electronic wizardry that was just being developed. It was urban music. It merged sounds from the music of blacks and whites. It was speeded up and loud and had a, gr had a beat that was repeated and repeated so you couldn't get it out of your head. Some of it was political music. Some of it was disturbing music. The most influential musician of the Vietnam era was a young songwriter and performer who called himself Bob Dylan, although his real name was Robert Allen Zimmerman. Dylan was a poet who played a guitar and a harmonica and wrote music and lyrics. About the worries of the times, he was against the war and for civil rights, and his songs, Blowin' in the Wind and The Times They Are Changing, became theme songs for the counterculture. Four English musicians, charming and inventive and electric, became the most important popular musicians of their time, maybe of all time. They were called the Beatles, and they were full of energy and terrific tunes. The Beatles had listened to a lot of black music on the radio in Liverpool, England, the big industry port city where they grew up. They loved its drumbeat, its rhythm, and its energy and emotion. It was the black music we dug, said Beatle John Lennon. They took that music and turned it into something that was all their own. It was hard for anyone to ignore the Beatles, but there are many other good musicians too. Aretha Franklin, the daughter of a Detroit Baptist minister, was one of the superstars. She managed to take gospel and blues and merge them together into something that was sad and raw and cool all at the same time. It was called Soul. Franklin, like most of the rock stars, came from an ordinary background. It was her talent that was extraordinary. Not everyone liked rock. In fact, some people hated it. The lyrics were often about sex or drugs, and the volume of the instruments, which were usually electrically amplified, could be ear-splitting. But a lot of people, especially young people, kept their amplifiers turned way up. 